Hey guys, welcome back to Self-Hosted Pro. In this video, we're going to be going over the installation of Open Media Vault 5. This is going to be geared towards installing it as a VM in Proxmox. Uh, there's some really detailed videos out there on YouTube that go over the installation with a lot of depth. I'll leave a link in the comments to Techno Dad Life's video, which goes really into detail on Open Media Vault. Uh, we're just going to be going over the parts that we need to get set up in order to get this to be a good base for the rest of our home lab. I will be doing a comparison of Open Media Vault, FreeNAS, and Unraid in the near future, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Our end goal for this video is going to be having a few shared folders that we're going to share via Samba, and that we're also going to be using in Portainer. So let's go ahead and log into our Proxmox host and click on Shell so we can get a root shell into our server. And then we are going to navigate over to slash var lib bz templates iso try template iso and then we're going to be using wget to download the latest version of open media vault i'll have a link in the comments for you and as soon as this is done we'll go ahead and work on creating our open media vault virtual machine all right, now that that download has completed, we can come up here to the top and click on Create VM. I'm going to give it an ID of 500, but you can set it to whatever you want. This is purely just for display purposes. For name, I'm going to call it OMV5. For operating system, we're going to select the Open Media Vault ISO that we had just downloaded. I typically don't change anything under System. And under Hard Disk, I always change my bus to a Vert IO block. For storage, I'm going to be giving it some storage on the local LVM that I installed Proxmox on. This gets automatically created when you install Proxmox. Uh, and we don't have to give it a lot of storage on this. We're just going to do 30. This is just going to be for the OS to boot off of. We'll have some bigger drives available for storage uh, that we're going to provide it from our RAID that we set up in the last video. Under CPU, we're going to give it around four cores. For memory, we're going to do around 8 gigs of memory. Then for network, we don't have to change anything. We're just going to click on confirm and then finish. Make sure you don't start after created because we need to make some changes to the hardware. We're going to come over to hardware in our VM that we just created and we're going to click on add. We're going to add a hard disk and we're going to pick that ZFS pool that we created in the last video. And we're just going to give it a good amount of storage. So I'm going to give it 500 gigs. And then we should be all good to boot it up and get started with the installation. So click enter to go into the installer. Select enter for English, enter for United States, and enter for American English. Make sure you change those if you want other settings. Now we're going to give it a good host name. Um, I'll typically give it the fully qualified domain name here, so we don't have to set that in the future. So we're going to call this omv. Um, I'm going to use streambands.live because it's the same domain that I used in my WireGuard video. And then click on continue. Then make sure you give it a good root password. Select your time zone. And it's going to give us a warning here because there's more than one storage device connected. So it's going to start with the partitioner and let us pick what we want to use. We're going to use VDA1, or sorry, VDA, which is this first virtual disk here. And then it's going to go through and install the system. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and select our country and select the mirror you want to use. I just pick the base deb.debian.org usually. I don't have any kind of proxy, so I'm just going to hit continue. And now it's going to go through the grub install process. All right, and then we're just going to hit enter to reboot. 
Once you boot up, you should see a screen like this that has the interface and the IP address associated with it that we're going to be connecting to. If you see a bunch of interfaces here and IP addresses that you don't recognize, make sure you go into your hardware, into your network device, click on edit, and turn the firewall off. So we don't need to do anything in the terminal for this. We can actually just navigate directly to the web interface. All right, and now that we're at the web interface, we're going to log in using the default credentials, which is just going to be admin and open media vault, all lowercase. It's going to look just like that. And the first thing we're going to do is hop into the general settings here, come over to the web administrator password, and we're going to set a nice secure password for this. All right, and once we've done that, we're going to come over to Web Administration, and we're going to change the port to 801. And we're going to change the automatic logout to 60 minutes. That way we have a good amount of time to make changes and things like that when we're in here. And once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and click on Apply, and click on Yes. And what's going to happen here is the page is going to take a really long time to load and then time out because we've changed the port that this runs on. So we're going to change this to port 801. And we're going to click on leave. And the reason why we're changing this port is because in Open Media Vault, inside of Portainer, we're going to have a container running Nginx Reverse Proxy Manager that's going to be using that port 80 to serve web pages. And we're actually going to be using that to serve this on a URL that we can access instead of having to navigate to the IP address manually. Once we've got that done, we're going to come down here to date and time. You're going to set your time zone. Mine is America slash Los Angeles. We're going to check use NTP server and we're just going to leave it at the default pool.ntp.org and then click on save. We don't need to change any of the other settings up here in the system area. So we're just gonna click on apply to apply those configuration changes just to make sure that the time zone and everything gets set. And now that the time zone is set, we're gonna come down here to update management and we are going to check for new updates. So go ahead and click on this checkbox right here and we are gonna go ahead and install all of these updates. All right, now all of those updates are done, so we're just going to click on close and reload. So now we're all up to date and we're ready to go ahead and make our shared folders. All right, so then we're going to come into file systems and we're going to click on create. We're going to select the hard drive that we'd previously set. For label, we're going to put media. And for file system, we're going to leave it as extended for. All right, and when we're done, we're going to click on close, and then we're going to click on mount, and then we're going to come down here to users. We're going to click on add, and we're just going to make a user for our shared folders so that we can connect to it from our desktops. And then click on save. All right. And then we can click on apply. And then we're going to come down to shared folders and click on add. I'm going to call the first one files. For device, we're going to select media. And for permissions, we're going to set this to be everyone. And we're going to repeat that process for a few more shared folders. We're going to do one for movies, TV, downloads, and backups. And once we've done that, we're going to click on apply in the top right. And then we're going to click on SMB in the lower left here and click on enable. We're going to leave this work group how it is. If you have a domain, you can set it to a domain and join it and everything like that. You can enable home directories for users if you would like to. And then we're going to click on save at the top. 
and then click on apply and yes. And then we're going to click on shares and we're going to add and we're going to add a share for files and we're going to leave all of the default settings except for we are going to enable this recycle bin and then click on save and then we'll also go ahead and add a shared folder for downloads and then we will also add a shared folder for backups or rather an SMB share and then click apply and that's pretty much the setup that we're going to be utilizing for Open Media Vault. In the next video, we're going to be going over installing Open Media Vault Extras as well as Portainer in order to start building out the rest of the services that we want to offer. Uh, in the meantime, this can be used as a great network attached storage device uh, with your Samba shares over here. You can connect to them very easily on Windows or Linux. If you need help doing that, make sure to let me know and I'll explain it a little bit more thoroughly. Or you can check out my blog, which will go over that process as well.